In this video, you will learn reactive form validation in Angular. Inside Angular, most often we are using reactive forms, and I really hope that you are not using template forms, because they are not scalable, not comfortable to use, and are not working in a rigorous way how reactive forms. This is why in this video we will focus on validating correctly reactive forms. And as you can see here, I prepared a small form just with two fields, first name and role, and submit button. As you can see, this is how it looks like in app component. First of all, I'm using here non-nullable form builder to create a form, and after this, by using group, I'm creating a form with two strings, first name and role. And here I have on submit button. Let's have a look on our HTML. This is just a normal reactive form. Here we have our form group on submit, and we are binding every single input with form control name. And here we can type something in our form and hit submit, and as you can see in the console, we are getting our form values. So this is how we are creating forms in reactive form, I hope that you already know that. Now let's talk about validation. And inside Angular, out of the box, we are getting lots of different validators to validate our fields. This is why here, as a second parameter to our thisfb control, we can provide an array with our validators. And we can write here validators dot, and here we're getting lots of validators, like for example email, max length, and so on. Let's use here required. So what it does, it creates for you a synchronous validation for this first name. I don't really like this approach, I prefer to provide here an object with field validators. And as you can see here, we have validators and async validators. And inside validators, in array, we can provide the same validator. So validators required. What is the difference? If you want to apply several validators, which might be asynchronous, and you simply throw an asynchronous validator in the array with synchronous validators, it won't work for you, and you will be confused, and you will need a lot of time to understand where the problem lies. If here you are creating your validators directly in the object, you won't throw your asynchronous validation here, you will create an additional field async validators and provide them there. This is a nice separation, this is why I prefer to use here an object. Now let's add one more validator, for example validators.minLength, and let's say we want to provide here 5. So our first name is required, and minimum length is 5. I'm sorry for interruption, but I just want to let you know that I have a membership here on the channel that you can join to support me. It will give you access to the new videos earlier, emojis and priority replies to your comments. Now let's jump back into the video. Now the question is how to render the errors inside our markup. And after our input I want to add an if condition. And what I want to write here is form.controls. And with controls we are getting access to all our fields, in our case it's a first name, dot invalid. Which essentially means we want to render our error messages only when this field is invalid. And, and here I want another condition. I want our form dot controls dot first name to be touched, which actually means we updated this field, or form dot controls dot first name dirty. So we are checking for dirty, when we want to know that field is changed, and touched will trigger on blow. On both these cases we want to render an error message, and we don't want to render it just by default. Now inside this if condition I want to write one more if condition, and here we can write form controls, first name, dot errors, and here inside we have all our errors. But we can't really write here dot required, because we will get an error that required comes from an index signature and we can't access it, this is why here we must write required like this. And it is not all our errors can be undefined, this is why let's write here errors dot required. So in this case here we want to render for example a small tag with first name is a required field. And you might say, okay, why didn't we write this logic inside this if condition? Then we can have just a single if condition and not nest these conditions. You are totally correct, but the idea is that we will write lots of different cases for every single error. But for every single case, we want the same logic with invalid, touched and dirty. 
which essentially means I can copy this if condition and change here required on minimum length. And here we can write first name must be at least five characters long. Let's check it in browser. I'm reloading the page, but don't have an error. Now I'm clicking on the first name and I'm clicking outside. So blur happened. And this is why we're seeing here our error message. And this blur is happened because of touched. And the same will be with dirty. If I'm typing something, as you can see the error first name must be at least five characters long appears. But if I remove everything, we're getting first name is a required field. Which actually means this logic is working correct. But at the moment when you are writing error messages, you might want to debug it. This is why I really like on the top to just render all error messages of the field. So we can write here form.controls.firstname.errors. And errors is an object. This is why here I want to apply a JSON pipe. Let's look in browser. Now by default we are getting required true as an error, but it is not visible. Why is that? Because we have here this logic with touched and dirty. But this actually means that our form is invalid by default. Now we are changing our field and we are getting other errors. For example, here is mean length. This is what we used here. And essentially we could use this information in our error message if we want to. And if we don't have an error, then our errors will be null. So this is how easy you can implement validation in reactive forms. But it is not enough. Why is that? Because sometimes it is not enough to have just standard validators. You want to create your own custom validator for a field or a lot of different forms. How can we do that? We can simply here on the top create a custom validator as a function. So here I want to export const a validator, for example, forbidden name validator. And what this function gets is a control. And our control is an abstract control. And back we want to get either validation errors or null. Now here let's create some forbidden names. I will create just an array with foo. And let's say that foo is forbidden in our application. Now here I want to check that names dot includes control value, which essentially means we are checking the value of our field if it is inside this array. And if it is, then this is an error. So we must return here an object with any key that we want. For example, forbidden name. And the value here, for example, name is not allowed. In other case, we are returning null when we don't have an error. So this is the easiest custom validator that you can create. Now we can go to our first name and add here our custom validator just by writing here forbidden name validator. And as you see, we did not call this function like for example minimum length. We wrote it like required. Let's check if it's working. I'm reloading the page and I can simply type here foo. As you can see, yes, in the markup, we didn't render any information regarding forbidden names, but we can directly see inside the error forbidden name, name is not allowed, which actually means we can now jump inside our HTML, copy this if condition and cover this forbidden name error. So here I'm providing forbidden name and let's say we want to render this information. So I can just copy paste the whole line and put it here inside small. Let's have a look again. I'm typing here foo and we're getting name is not allowed for our first name. So this is how we can create custom validators, but they are not configurable. For example, here we specified our array of names directly inside and we can't configure this validator from outside. And essentially sometimes you want to do that, like for example in minimum length. And we can do it relatively easy. I just want to take the whole content of forbidden validator and cut. Now here I want to provide array of names, which is a string array. And this will be a function. Now here I want to paste our function and I want to return it, which actually means now our forbidden validator is a function which returns a function. And it allows us to configure these names. This is why here inside we don't need to provide names, we're getting them from outside. And now our function back will return validator function. This is why here we must change the usage. Here is our forbidden name validator and we're providing inside an array with names, for example, foo. Let's check again. I am reloading the page. I'm typing here foo and we're getting name is not allowed, 
which essentially means it works just like before, but now it is a custom validator which we can configure. And the last thing that I want to show you is an asynchronous custom validator. What does it mean? Yes, we can create our own custom validators like this, but they are synchronous, which actually means they are not working with API, for example. And really often you need to do some API check and show the result in your form. And to implement a synchronous validator, here we can create a new function. Let's name it a sync role validator. And we will get here a control, which will be an abstract control. And here back what I want to return is an observable of validation errors or null. Which actually means this function is extremely similar to the function of custom validator. The only difference is that here we are returning an observable and not directly validation errors. Now inside we can just return any observable that we want, an API call for example. In this case I want to write exactly the same logic with includes by using off. So I can apply off on the control dot value and here I will use pipe and map. And inside our map function we are getting access to the value and we can now do some checks. For example before let's create allowed roles for our application and our roles will be either an admin or a developer. Now inside here we can check if our allowed roles have a value inside, then we want to return null. In other case we want to return an error, for example forbidden role. And here let's write a message, role is not allowed. So the most important difference is that here we are returning an observable. But the idea is the same, it is either null if you don't have an error, or it is an object with an error. Now here we must apply our async role validator on our role. This is why here as a second parameter I am providing an object with async validators, and here is an array with our async role validator. But in order to check this, it makes sense to jump to HTML and change inside form the first name to the role, so we see all errors of our role. Let's have a look in browser, as you can see by default we are getting forbidden role, role is not allowed. So now we can easily cover this error with exactly the same logic. I can copy paste the whole if conditions, put them inside role, we don't need two of them, we just need one, and here we need to change first name to role everywhere, and here we want to check if we are getting an error forbidden role, then we want to render this forbidden role message. Let's have a look in browser, I am reloading the page, we don't see this error, but now I am typing something and we are getting role is not allowed. I am typing here an admin and we don't have an error. So now you know how to validate your React form, but if you are still thinking that you are missing some reactive form cases, make sure to check this video also, because I covered all of them there.